Radio TV Fono Nut here, and what we have torn apart is a Motorola One Tube Wonder mono record player from about 1963 with a VM changer. This was a cheap purchase off of the Goodwill site. I was the only bidder, but as what usually happens, they didn't pack this thing as well as they needed to, and between that and FedEx doing their magic on it, the this the tilt down thing ripped out of the wood here so we're going to have to put that back and also because they didn't raise the transit screws the turntable or record changer to be more precise bounced around all over the place and now that's got to be taken care of and i've learned with goodwill it really does no good to tell them how to pack anything because uh i don't mean this ugly but most of what they got working for them have an IQ in the in the single digits and, and they just don't give a flip so telling them how to do something just goes in one ear and out the other all they're worried about is getting your money so the uh, CEO can help pay his uh, jet note and they're not worried about anything anything else Okay, Motorola, how do you propose I get this uh, mounting nut off when everything's so jammed in here? I can't even get the wrench over it. Now, I can't even get in here with a pair of pliers, so how in the hell do they think anybody's supposed to get this out? But no, seriously, I need to just quit ordering this junk because I've got enough to last me a lifetime, and it's getting so that most of what I get ends up arriving damaged. And when you get on places like eBay and Goodwill trying to find bargains, they're not really out there like they used to be. If you find something for a reasonable price, the shipping is usually jacked way up. Either that or the item is in such poor condition it wouldn't even be good for parts, let alone restoration. Anything that looks remotely decent with reasonable shipping is going to get jacked up to some ludicrous level, so it's just really not even worth the effort anymore to be honest and if this damn quarter inch bolt they have holding the chassis together wasn't there i could slip my wrench over it and get it off but no that would be too simple and another thing why not put an rca plug where the cable plugs in that way the changer can be easily separated from the chassis but no i guess that would have cost you an extra half a cent too so yeah scratch that idea I'm about to the point of just going ahead and scrapping this thing and not even worrying about it. I don't do difficulty in servicing. I don't care if it was made 50 years ago or made last week. Things ought to be designed where they can be taken apart easily. Without any fanfare, you can repair it, put it back together. But no, even back then, they didn't always do that. Case in point, this right here. Like I said, I can't even get out in here with a pair of pliers to... To loosen this up and it is somewhat loose from years of vibration but this this bolt head is getting in the way and won't let me just spin it off all right i'm finally able to get it moving by placing the pliers up against them and doing it like this since it's already loose but this is not a good design they should have come up with another way of doing this and whenever i put this back together i might remove that offending bolt right there because i don't think it's going to fall apart with that bolt gone and here comes the kitty cat so this piece here they had held in place with a couple of small finishing nails and you can see where it just ripped the wood all to hell so yeah we're gonna have to fill that with something or another and i may just have to bolt this in with some tiny bolts really don't want to do that but that may be the only choice we have you can see the cabinet is coming apart down here at the bottom also likely aided by FedEx and we need to glue this fabric back on looks like this has probably been sitting in a little bit of water all right I got it back on temporarily but that is definitely going to need to be reinforced and fixed that's not gonna that's not gonna work that way now, I wonder if the cartridge is any good. Probably not. It's a three volt crystal, so it'll be a miracle if it's actually still alive. Now, the cartridge has a date stamp on it of October 1972, so that tells us that this was used 
into the 1970s and since this is a later production cartridge there is a chance that it might still be alive actually a better way for Motorola to have done this would have been to mount the amplifier to the motor board itself that way when you unscrew the motor board you just lift the whole thing out change your amplifier and whole nine yards but yeah, unfortunately these manufacturers didn't put technicians in charge of designing stuff probably because they were afraid we'd cost them too much money all right, I've got my voltmeter, AC voltmeter, across the cartridge, and I'm rubbing the needle tip with my finger. It's got some output, but it's not nearly as stout as it should be. If this thing was as hot as it should be, I'd be getting about 3 to 4 volts here, and I'm not. So this cartridge, for all intents and purposes, is dead, and the idler wheel is hard as a rock. So... You know, just to have the idler wheel rebuilt and the cartridge, we're looking at a minimum of about 60 bucks right there. And then whenever I get reminded of such things like that, I ask myself, why did I even bother buying this thing? Even though it was cheap, why did I, why did I even bother knowing, going in, that, that it's going to be an expensive repair? All of these are. So if I fix this, this is going to be one that will probably stay here because, you know, it ain't like anybody would give me enough money for it to compensate me for my investment. Or let me put it this way, nobody in the county I live in would. Now, other places in the country, people would be overjoyed to uh, compensate me for my troubles and my expenses, but just a different mindset of people everywhere else versus what we have here in this county I live in. Now this is what happens when uh, you don't uh, raise the transit screws. It bounces around in shipping. The motor, the changer chassis gets bent. You can see the bolts here are not straight because the chassis here is bent. Now I can straighten that if I'm careful. And let's see, what about this one? Yeah, this one, this one here may be in better shape, but yeah, this one here, it got a little bent, and that's what happens when you don't raise the transit screws. And what I need to start doing, in addition to just giving packing instructions, letting them know up front, if you fail to follow these instructions, and the item arrives damage or destroyed I will be filing a claim and I will be getting my money back so don't mean to sound harsh but I'm tired of people not following my instructions and me receiving damaged merchandise so if you want to keep the money that you just received for this then you would best uh, do what I tell you to do because after all once I pay for it the item is mine and I have every right to uh, uh, let them know what I expect of them. And it's not like this changer chassis is made out of a piece of uh, lightweight tin. This is pretty heavy duty, so that just shows you how rough these things get treated in shipment for them to be able to bend like that. And as far as these cartridges, these used to be a dime a dozen. They were used in billions of record players during the oh, from the 50s through the early 70s in kitty record players and in better models like this with automatic changers but these haven't been made in over 40 years and it doesn't look like anybody's getting in any hurry about making them again the new old stock ones that were out there have just about vanished and the ones you find are going to be ungodly expensive and are will be doa from sitting in storage unused for decades and absorbing moisture in the crystal element turning to powder so most likely what we're going to end up doing with this is trying to find a VM tone arm with a standard half inch mount and we're probably going to end up modifying the amplifier so I can use a standard half inch mount cartridge in this that has a lower output and then I can set the tracking pressure to a lighter weight and then have the ability to play 
stereo records. Now, don't get me wrong, if this cartridge was still good, I'd leave it be and just use it to play mono records, but if I'm going to have to modify it anyway to make it work, then I might as well just uh, put something better in here. But there's a couple of factors, things, that usually are always wrong with VM record changers, especially the ones from the 60s. Number one, the idler wheel is always going to be hard as a rock unless it's been rebuilt or replaced in the not too distant past and also in later ones the plastic power switch will crack and break and fall apart this one here appears to have the old good metal switch in it so it should be okay so you want to keep that in mind whenever you encounter or anticipating buying a record player with a VM changer in it keep in mind that you're probably going to have to replace the switch and you're probably going to have to replace the idler wheel and you're looking at maybe what 60 bucks for those two things and if you have to replace a cartridge add about another 25 to 30 to that so you know keep that in mind there now the older vm changer is the one with what i call the double decker idler wheel and the motor that they move up and down instead of the idler wheel for changing speed selection those usually hold up better but starting in about 63, when they went to this type of arrangement in the single-decker idler wheel, I don't know what kind of material they incorporated into the rubber, but after so many decades, it gets hard and turns to plastic, and the result is you hear a scraping sound when the turntable is in gear and turning, and also it won't have enough torque to run the changer through the uh, chain cycle. As in, listen to this. You hear that? That's the... That's what a hard dollar wheel sounds like when it's scraping against the, uh, the metal turntable platter. And another thing the hardened wheels can cause is, over time, it can uh, reduce the diameter of the motor sh motor capstan and that can uh, slow your turntable speed down so don't run one with a hard idler wheel if it's turned to stone have it rebuilt all right i think i have everything bent somewhat back the way it's supposed to and we're sitting in here somewhat normally now and another consequence that i failed to mention of not backing out the transit screws is when the changer is bouncing up and down violently and shipping the center spindle can actually poke through the lid of the record changer. I've had that happen more than a few times too, and that kind of damage really can't be fixed as easily. So to back out the transit screws, all you need is the appropriate screwdriver, and you just turn them all the way until the changer is flush with the motor board. Where's a Phillips screwdriver? That would work better. You just turn it all the way until the changer is flush with the motor boards. You cannot take the you cannot take the screws all the way out. They'll only go out so far, and that's it. See, there you go. The changer is pulled down flush with the motor board and there's no way it can bounce around in transit. And this is another pet peeve of mine. When I see somebody trying to sell a record player and they have the tone arm on the platter mat like that. I mean, what's the point of doing that? And you'd be surprised how often I see it. All that does is risk uh, damaging your needle and possibly the cartridge. This one's already shot, so it doesn't matter. Oh, and another thing you need to do when you're shipping a record player is don't rely on just the little clip that holds the tone arm in place. Either tie the tone arm down or tape it to the rest with painter's tape. Preferably tie it in place if there's a hole in the rest to, to run a piece of wire through, but if not, at least tape it to the uh, arm rest to where it can't come loose and bounce around in shipping and 
damage things and you know, see the cat agrees here as you can see the turnbuckles here will not allow the transit screws to be backed out out of the way I can't tell you how many people I've given these instructions to and to my memory to my knowledge as far as my memory goes there's only been one or two that have actually complied but yeah even though this was a cheaper record player you know Motorola still made quality stuff and I can tell that quality components were used in the uh, manufacture of this so and we have a real wooden cabinet here not some formaldehyde infused uh, press board sawdust crap like what Crosley uses looking at this amplifier we see some electrical tape here and it's obvious this filter capacitor has been replaced so someone has been in here looking at the circuitry it looks like just your typical single tube amplifier nothing nothing fancy it'll sound okay but of course won't sound as good as some of the uh, higher quality models and as far as these cartridge wires you have three here as we can see but this is a mono player so what are we doing with three wires well this wire with the red stripe on it that's your cartridge hot lead it goes straight into the volume control the center wire is your cartridge negative lead it goes to this point right here on the terminal strip which connects to this disc capacitor and the other side of that disc capacitor connects to circuit ground B minus and then we also have a film capacitor that connects between circuit ground and the chassis and this third wire connects directly to the chassis itself which also connects to the frame of the turntable here that's to prevent hum and noise pick up here's the chassis shield here that someone removed miraculously it was still floating around inside of the box so what I did was well there goes a tube which miraculous, miraculously didn't fall out during shipping I removed that bolt screw that holds the chassis together that was getting in the way of our chassis retaining nut there's no chance of this coming apart we have two screws on the other side we have one right here now as well as this being soldered right here so there is no way that's coming apart and with that out of the way I can more easily get to this nut to put it back in the record player see with those screws out of the way I'm able to get or that screw out of the way I'm able to get my wrench over the uh, nut to tighten it down and also remove the screw on this side too so like I said it's not going anywhere and when I go back in this and service it I might solder this side together just like they have the other side soldered together but yeah this was a dumb stupid move on Motorola's part and like I said generally I like their stuff but they blew it with this design if they were going to use two screws they could have put the other one down here where it would be out of the way of this nut here all right we're not going to connect anything up we're just going to put it all back together to get everything out of the way and when I have time to work on this then we'll pull it all apart and work on it there's really no need in plugging it in anyway we know it's not going to work so that's that and I'll tell you the story on the cat here before we go about five or six weeks ago this cat showed up over here and it was a little skittish of me at first it was acting like it wanted to come to me but then it was having second thoughts well I got it to come to me and it was meowing like crazy uh, gave it a piece of off-brand cheese and that I had on hand and, and a piece of chicken lunch meat which it devoured stayed around for about a day day and a half and then the the big dog came out and ran it off and I figured that was probably the end of it well fast forward five or six weeks and it showed back up over here being more friendly with me and it's obvious the cat has had human contact I feel like it's one that somebody turned loose you know that's what they do they'll get a pet 
and then decide for whatever reason they bit off more than they could chew so they just turn it loose somewhere and let it fend for itself and I feel like that's what happened here well anyway I've got an old cat trap that no longer works as it should it's old and rusted and won't close on its own so I was able to lure the cat into the trap and I called animal control to come get it and while they were trying to transfer the cat from my cage to theirs it got away and I said right then well that'll be the end of that because once they're trapped the chances of them ever going back in a cage again are slim to none and it's been hanging around over here for about a week now and yes I've slipped it a few pieces of cheese and lunch meat here and there but if I can ever get this thing if I can ever find somebody who wants this cat or if I can find a animal shelter that can take it and possibly find her a new home I think it's a she then that's what I'd rather do if it wasn't for the fact of me having a big dog who hates cats I'd try to keep her around here but you know we, we can't I don't have the means of taking care of her so she's got to find another place to go and the dog has already ran her off several times but she's not deterred by that you know, when the dog gets out of sight, she comes out of hiding. But yeah, my my theory with pets are if if you're going to get a pet, then you need to you need to take care of them. You need to keep them put up. And if you're not willing to do that, then you probably shouldn't get a pet. And if circumstances change to the point where you can't take care of the pet anymore, at least uh, take it somewhere, try to find it a, a good home, just don't turn it out somewhere. She'll let me pet her, but she does not like to be held. You can see she's trying to get away from me. She does not like to be held for whatever reason. And I guess cats are like people. Some cats like other things, some cats don't. And I remember my sister had two cats that came from the same litter. One of them was very people friendly and every time I'd go over there it would be meowing and jumping up in my lap and purring and oh so now it's gonna go after the packing material that the record player came in. And then the cat's sister, she didn't want nothing to do with nobody. And my sister told me she, or maybe that was a male cat, I don't remember, but anyway, the, the friendly cat sibling didn't want anything to do with anybody. And my sister told me, uh, he don't want nothing to do with anybody unless it's his idea. If he decides he wants some attention, he'll come to you. You can give him attention for a minute, and then he'll go back to laying up in the window, minding his own business. But he does not like people getting close to him all right we're back together again temporarily i do not have the time or the resources to fix this right now i've got too much other stuff going on but when that changes we will tear this back apart and overhaul it i think it's probably worth restoring so what we know needs to be done is these mounting things here for the need to be fixed and reinforced where they won't come apart the cabinet needs to be glued back on this corner down here the record changer needs an item or wheel and a cartridge at a minimum of course it will probably also need rubber motor mounting grommets and a complete tear down to include cleaning and re-lubrication the amplifier We'll probably, well, the amplifier will definitely need some work done on it, if nothing else, to uh, neaten up what was already done to it. But to do it properly, that selenium rectifier would have to be changed over to a silicon diode and an, and an appropriate dropping resistor put in series with the diode. Uh, the filter capacitor would have to be replaced. Everything else looks okay. You know, we'll check the resistors and all that and replace any of those that are out of tolerance. Clean the potentiometers and 
when it's all said and done it ought to be good to go now the most challenging thing about all this is going to be finding a excuse me finding a cartridge if i can find a proper cartridge that's good for a reasonable price then yeah you know i wouldn't mind fixing it back like original but if i can't do that then we'll just have to rig up a more modern cartridge and modify the amplifier to be a two-stage amp and that's just the way it is i mean even the even the 89t school record player cartridges that were made by a static that were once a dime a dozen and were made by the billions are just about extinct now and i used to use those types of cartridges in these single stage record players but it's getting to the point where i can't even get those kind of cartridges any, anymore and when i do find them they're 25 to 30 dollars and up and in my mind that's just ridiculous for something that has a sapphire tip and when it wears out in 80 to 100 hours you're back to spending 25 to 30 plus dollars on a new cartridge if you can even get one by that time so I'm leaning more towards replacing this tone arm with one with a standard half inch mount installing something like a fan steel P226 cartridge and uh, modifying the amplifier to have a second stage and this record player would sound really good well not high fidelity but it would sound decent for what it is it would certainly sound better than a Crosley Cruiser with those modifications in fact even in its original state if it was all working properly it would sound better than a Crosley Cruiser so I'm really done with this for now we'll get to it later I just wanted to do this video to to reiterate if you're packing and shipping one of these do it right back out the transit screws there's usually one here and one back here no matter who made the record changer some changers have three screws if it does obviously back all three of them out secure the tone arm to its rest well before you do that you probably want to run the changer through its cycle to make sure it's not in mid cycle put the tone arm on its rest either tie or tape it down so it can't come loose in shipping and one thing i forgot to mention take a piece of styrofoam run it over the turntable spindle and then secure the overarm to the styrofoam just tie it in place and then close everything up and it ought to be good to go and then you'll need to wrap the record player in several layers of bubble wrap and put it inside of a nice size box fill the empty space with packing material nothing should move around and preferably you need to double box it I was reading the other day, I think it was on the record player group, some guy bought a, a record player off of eBay and he sent the seller instructions on how to pack it and even offered to pay extra and the seller pretty much let him know I'm not going to that much trouble to ship this. If I went to that much trouble to ship everything I sold, I'd be losing money. And my comment to the to the buyer was that posted that on Facebook if I had a seller tell me something smart like that he'd be losing money on that deal because I would be demanding a refund just for his uh, smart aleck attitude like I said earlier once you buy it it's yours and you have every right to uh, request that the seller pack it up a certain way all right, I've babbled on enough about this. This battery is probably fixing to die, so I'm going to get out of here for now, and we'll get back into some repair videos before long, hopefully. I've got some stuff. I've got some repair footage saved. I just haven't had a chance to put it together to make it into a video yet, but I will try to do that oh let's see this is sunday maybe i'll try to have something done by next saturday maybe something put together that i can show you there's the cat trying to find dinner the other day it saw a i think it saw a bird over in the in the bushes over there or the bird sounded close 
cat got about midway there and started meowing at it and then it ran up the privacy fence like it was going to go up the tree uh, sat on the sat on the top of the fence for a while came back down into this yard went back up the fence came back down into this yard went back up the fence and then I think it fell off the fence into the other yard which happens to be a vacant house it's been vacant for like 13 years that was a case where the guy went in a nursing home and the state took his house to supposedly sell to uh, recoup their money and nothing's been done with it yet. Oh, there's been a lot of people that has paid the back taxes on it, but nothing has come of it. So you can imagine the backyard looks like a jungle over there. Well, when the cat fell off into the other yard, it was meowing like it was in distress, like, oh crap, where am I? How do I get out of here? And then it finally climbed back up the fence and jumped back over into this yard, and that's that. So, yeah, we got a, we're probably going to have to find you a home unless you turn into a good mouse and rat catcher. If you turn into a good mouse and rat catcher, then we might just let you stay around here.